proper management of the inboard treatment process for bilge water and waste oil is necessary for maintaining the engine room plant in good operational condition. It is also vital for conserving the marine environment. Bilge water produced in a ship's engine room must be treated to an oil content level of 15 ppm or lower before being discharged into the sea, a requirement of the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, MARPOL. We use the integrated bilge treatment system to minimize the amount of oily bilge water generated in engine room machinery spaces. This system is designed to minimize the mixture of oil with bilge water by reducing the amount of oil discharged from machinery spaces and by separating oily bilge and water bilge at the initial stage. During inspections, port states are empowered to check whether or not the crewman in charge is well versed in the handling of sewage treatment. As such, all crewmen handling sewage treatment must be able to demonstrate a thorough understanding of the procedures involved. Ship's bilge is roughly divided into two types according to their source. One is oily bilge water. It is composed of water and oil that leaks from engine room pipes during daily operation of machinery and during maintenance work. Oil and water leak out and then mix together to create oily bilge water, also known as drainage bilge. This fluid is collected in a bilge well or in the upper section of a bilge tank. Oily bilge water is collected in the bilge tank. Oily bilge water is transferred from the bilge tank to the bilge separator, where oil content is removed. After oil content has been removed, the water is discharged overboard. The MARPOL convention stipulates that before waste water can be discharged overboard, it must be treated inboard until its oil content is below 15 ppm. In addition to oily bilge water, we also have oily drain and oil sludge. Oily drain refers to drain resulting from the leakage of fuel oil and lubricating oil from the engine room, as well as oil leakage from equipment that uses oil. Specifically, oily drain is leakage of oil into pieces of equipment that use oil, such as diesel engines, burners, pumps, heaters, coolers, filters, oil tanks and the deep combing found under the oil tank. Oil sludge is foreign matter other than oil from the fuel oil and lubricating oil purifiers. Heavy fuel oil for marine engines is used only after impurities such as water and carbonic solids have been removed with a purifier. These impurities can account for around 1% of the fuel oil consumed. This means that at a ship consuming 100 tons of fuel oil every day can generate as much as one ton of foreign matter other than oil. Oily drain and sludge are also known as oily bilge. Using a sludge pump, it is transferred from the sludge tank and oily drain tank and collected in the waste oil tank. From the waste oil tank, it is transferred to the waste oil settling tank or waste oil service tank for heating to evaporate its water content. Finally, it is either burned in an incinerator or unloaded to a shore reception facility. We have outlined the drainage bilge and oily bilge treatment systems. Now we would like to briefly explain the clean drain treatment system, which is independent of these systems. Clean drain refers to drain that leaks from equipment used for seawater, freshwater, steam and the like, 
all of which are not normally contaminated by oil. Clean drain is collected into clean drain tanks. It is then directly discharged overboard using a general service pump or similar equipment. In this video, we will stick to equipment currently in use on board ships because the IMO continues to deliberate upon treatment methods for bilge water from ships. Regardless of the bilge treatment method you use, you have a choice of several easy to operate robust systems that are capable of performing the task safely and securely. The process for treating oily bilge water is basically as follows. A bilge pump is used to collect oily bilge water into the bilge tank from the engine room tank top and numerous bilge wells. Oily bilge water can contain a lot of oil. In that event, it is sent to the bilge primary tank for pre-treatment. Pre-treatment is necessary because it reduces the stress placed on the bilge separator coalescer, thereby preserving and extending its service life. The bilge primary tank has a cascade structure and is equipped with a heating apparatus. As the primary separator for oily bilge water, this equipment does just that. It separates. Oil and water are separated using gravity and the oil is collected in the tank top. The separated oil and water are discharged separately. Oil falls into the waste oil tank and bilge water with low oil content falls into the bilge tank. A bilge separator pump is used to send oily bilge water from the bilge tank to the bilge separator. The bilge separator separates water and oil and discharges the water after treating it until it has super low oil content below 15 ppm. The separated oil content is discharged into the waste oil tank using an automated discharger. Let's take a look at the bilge separator structure. Shown here is a bilge separator using the gravity separation method. Oil has a smaller specific gravity than that of water. The inside of the separator unit needs to be filled with seawater beforehand. Oily bilge water sent from the waste oil tank undergoes initial separation in the primary separation chamber, taking advantage of the difference in specific gravity between oil and water. The bilge water separated in the primary separation chamber still contains micronized oil, so it goes into the secondary separation chamber. The coalescer in the secondary chamber separates most of the remaining oil by causing it to rise to the surface. Having achieved super low oil content after secondary treatment, the treated water is then discharged overboard. This unit's oil water separation performance capability is below 15 ppm, typically less than 5 ppm. Oil separated in the primary and secondary chambers collects in the upper part of the respective chambers. After the oil level of each chamber has been determined by a capacitive sensing detector, a solenoid valve is opened and oil is discharged automatically using the chamber's internal pressure. If your bilge separator is equipped with a 15 ppm bilge alarm, check the alarm in accordance with the operating manual to confirm that it works properly. 
After finishing bilge separator operation, clean the strainer installed in the connecting pipe between the primary and secondary chambers to prevent the coalescer from becoming clogged with refuse and sludge. In the event that pressure loss due to clogging of the coalescer exceeds the preset value, follow the instructions in the operating manual and conduct either back or open washing. Shown here is a coalescer prior to use. The coalescer's structure and materials are designed to enlarge oil particles and increase resistance to pressure due to clogging. Next, let's look at the structure of a bilge separator based on a four-stage separation system to which an emulsion treatment function has been added. For preliminary separation, Chamber 1 is based on the specific gravity separation method using parallel plates. Housed in a box divided into two sections, the parallel plates physically treat high concentration oil. Oil drops become coarse, rise up to the surface and are then discharged automatically. Filled with demulsifier, Chamber 2 is used to transform the emulsion back into oil by breaking down the emulsification. It also filters and removes foreign matter other than oil, thereby preventing the coalescers in Chamber 3 and 4 from becoming clogged. Chamber 3 incorporates a coalescer, the main purpose of which is to separate and recover particulate oil. Made of 18-8 stainless steel and heat-resistant fiber, the coalescer has a structure designed to convert fine particles of oil into coarse grains. As such, it can be easily reclaimed even when contaminated by oil. Over 90% of the oil that has been demulsified in Chamber 2 is separated and removed in Chamber 3 alleviating the burden placed on the Chamber 4 coalescer. The precision coalescer in Chamber 4 separates and removes demulsified particulate oil that could not be captured by the Chamber 3 coalescer. After final treatment in Chamber 4, the bilge water now has an oil content below 15 ppm and is discharged overboard. Observing 15 ppm oil concentration in bilge water is nearly impossible to do with the human eye. And it is utterly impossible to do so when the oil content has been emulsified. Therefore, an oil content monitor is used to monitor oil concentration at all times. The oil content monitor is designed for use with bilge separators and continuously measures the oil concentration of bilge water. It issues an alarm when the oil concentration exceeds 15 ppm. If the oil concentration remains below 15 ppm, the monitor issues a normal signal. Under other conditions, it issues an alarm signal. A double safety system is employed to manage the issuance of alarms. The oil content alarm, when the oil concentration exceeds 15 ppm. And the abnormality alarm, when water samples fall short of preset criteria or gauges malfunction. Let's now take a look at the processes for treating oily drain and oil sludge. Oily drain and oil sludge are collected into the lubricating oil and fuel oil sludge tanks, main engine scavenging drain tank, LO and FO combing drain tanks, and the main engine piston rod stuffing box drain tank. Using the sludge pump, these are recovered and collected in the waste oil tank. 
When oily drain and oil sludge are not collected in the waste oil tank, the sludge pump is used to transfer them to the waste oil service tank. The waste oil settling tank and waste oil service tank have a heating device that heats oily drain and oil sludge at high temperatures to evaporate the water content. Both the waste oil settling tank and waste oil service tank have a line leading to a mist box. In some cases, an exhaust fan is equipped, allowing evaporated water to be discharged overboard. When your system has both a waste oil settling tank and a waste oil service tank, the waste oil circulating pump circulates waste oil between the two tanks. After its water content has been evaporated, waste oil is burned in an incinerator. Or it is unloaded to shore reception facilities via a standard shore connection. Oil drain from the fuel oil system can be burned in a boiler as recycled oil. The incinerator is used to incinerate waste oil from fuel oils used by the main and auxiliary engines, sludge oil from bilge separators and the like, and household and other solid wastes. By approximate weight ratio, waste oils and solid wastes burned in the incinerator are as shown in this graph. After its water content has been evaporated in the waste oil settling tank, the heated waste oil is transferred by a pump via flow regulator and is then ejected from the incinerator burner. A special line returns some of the waste oil via the flow regulator to the waste oil tank. Marine diesel oil, or MDO, is used for ignition burner. MDO can also be used for washing the waste oil line after incineration is complete. There are incinerators like this one that features a rotary cup burner designed to deal with highly viscous oil. This oil burner has a structure that sends oil into a cup rotating at high speed, using centrifugal force to stretch the oil into the thin film and then blowing highly pressurized air onto the thin oil film to atomize it. Compared with pressure spraying type burners, which have a nozzle tip with an extremely small hole from which atomized oil is sprayed, the rotary cup burner features a centrifugal mechanism that eliminates the need for a small nozzle hole. Because of its structure, this burner will not clog when used for heavy fuel oil. It is capable of stable burning for many hours and is able to handle oils across a wide range of viscosities. The lower section of the furnace is equipped with a solid incineration air vent. The IMO provides for specific requirements regarding waste oil incinerator performance capabilities. To prevent the generation of dioxin. In furnace temperatures, must be between 850 degrees Celsius and 1200 degrees Celsius. Exhaust gas temperature must be below 350 degrees Celsius within 2.5 meters of the furnace outlet. An in-furnace temperature of 600 degrees Celsius must be achieved within five minutes of startup. 
to prevent burns and fires. Outer wall surface temperatures must be within the ambient temperature plus 20 degrees Celsius and under 60 degrees Celsius. Opening closing of the import port and ashtray must be locked when the in-furnace temperature exceeds 220 degrees Celsius. To release in-furnace gases. In-furnace pressure must be kept negative during combustion. The fan must be capable of independent operation after incineration stops. To prevent oil leakage, two solenoid valves must be provided in the fuel oil line. For safe ignition, combustion and stop, automatic operation of air pre-purge, ignition and air post-purge is required. To maintain and protect product functions, the fire resistant materials must have a resistance to the combustion chamber design temperature, plus 20%, over 1440 degrees Celsius. For treatment of inboard waste oil, long time continuous burning of waste oil for six to eight hours is required. For complete combustion of waste, 6 to 12% oxygen concentration in the combustion chamber is required. The maximum average value of carbon monoxide content in the exhaust gas must be 200 milligrams per megajoule or less. Soot density must be Baccarat 3 or less. The amount of incombustibles in residual ash must be less than 10%. This is another type of incinerator. The combustion furnace proper has a double casing structure, the outer circumference being an air chamber and the inner casing being a fireproof chamber. The inner surface is lined with a castable refractory. The furnace has a welded horizontal cylinder structure equipped with an air cooling jacket. A punching plate is also provided as a heat insulation measure. This together with the air cooling system ensures furnace safety. The furnace front has a waste oil burner, pilot burner, flame detector, ash removable doors and pilot burner pump. Arranged on the side are a solid charging door, waste oil pump, waste oil strainer and pilot burner strainer. A diluting damper is equipped on the exhaust gas outlet to cool the high temperature gas in the furnace. The solid charging door is of double door bucket type design, while ash removal doors are provided on the front and side of the furnace. Either an air jet system or a rotary burner system is used for spraying of waste oil to be combusted. According to the manufacturer, FO-derived waste oil with a water content of less than 40% can be burned with a waste oil burner. For solid waste, a waste oil burner is used to allow combustion to be carried out by continually dumping the waste into the furnace while maintaining a high in-furnace temperature. The combustion system is designed for operation at a maximum allowable in-furnace temperature of 1000 degrees Celsius 
and a minimum allowable temperature of 850 degrees Celsius. With an exhaust gas temperature of 350 degrees Celsius, the normal operation temperature of which is 200 degrees Celsius. An induction fan is installed on the exhaust side of the upper section of the furnace proper to keep the in-furnace pressure negative at all times. The diluting damper equipped on the furnace outlet sucks in outside air to bring the exhaust gas temperature to below 200 degrees Celsius within 2.5 meters of the furnace outlet before discharging the gas. For the following substances, inboard combustion is prohibited. Cargo residue and related contaminant packaging materials as designated by the MARPOL Convention 7378 Annex 1 and 2. Polychlorinated biphenyl PCB. Garbage containing more than a trace amount of heavy metals as stipulated by the MARPOL Convention 7378 Annex 5. Refined petroleum products containing a halogen mixture. Wastewater, sludge and oily sludge from other sources. Residue of dregs cleaning system. Ships are equipped with a main cooling sea water pump, the pump with the largest capacity, and an emergency bilge line. If the engine room has flooded, in an emergency bilge water can be discharged by opening a sea water line suction valve on the main cooling sea water pump or a valve on the emergency bilge lines pump. Independent bilge lines are fitted with pipes capable of transferring bilge water directly from the bilge well simply by opening or closing a pump side valve on the fire and GS pump or the fire bilge and ballast pump. Bilge water in cargo holds can be transferred from the bilge well of each hold on the starboard or port side using the engine room's fire and GS pump, fire bilge and ballast pump, or main cooling seawater pump. The engine room eductor is used to clean out cargo hold bilge wells. Treatment of bilge water and waste oil is strictly regulated under MARPOL Convention 7378, which was established by the IMO. Its official title is the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, 1973, as modified by the Protocol of 1978 relating thereto. And the purpose of the MARPOL Convention 7378 is to prevent marine pollution by ships' navigation and accidents. Frequent modifications and revisions have been made to the MARPOL Convention since it went into effect in 1983. As such, each and every crew in charge must conduct bilge water and waste oil treatment in a proper manner, while paying attention to the latest developments relating to the MARPOL Convention. Records of bilge water and waste oil treatment operations must be entered in the oil record book, which must be signed by the responsible senior officer and the master.